So hello and welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday night and uh, we are live. In fact, we are live here on the channel every single Tuesday night with healthy cooking, uh, success tips when it comes to weight loss, and then inspiration. And tonight we have the honor and privilege to have two clients that I've had the privilege of working with. They were both involved in the biggest transformation and they are friends. And collectively these friends, see you are who you flock with. And I cannot wait until you hear their story. I'm not gonna tell it all in the intro. I'm gonna let them tell it. But together in six months, they lost a total of 87.2 pounds. Absolutely freaking incredible. So if you are brand new here and you have not hit the subscribe button, make sure to do that. Smash the like video. Give these ladies some encouragement down in the comments because they have worked their booties off, literally. Their booties are way smaller than when I met them. And so without further ado, please help me welcome to the channel, Wendy. Hi. Yay. And uh, let's bring Jennifer in. <laughs> hey. Hey. Bye -bye. So, uh, so excited to have you guys here. This is our very first like double interview here on the channel. Most of the time it's like, you know, two people and that's it. And so Wendy, I want to start with you because you started off in season three of the biggest transformation. Yes. And when you got started, you weighed 195 pounds. And how tall are you? I'm five foot. My <laughs> husband says I'm not even, but yes. <laughs> and so 195 pounds on a five foot frame, you know, it's not like you were six foot. And so you lost 42.8 pounds in six months. Yes. <laughs> and so like what, and you still look incredible. Like, uh, watching you transform has been like, and you're just this little itty bitty person. And so let's, let's go back for one second to 195 pound Wendy. Like what was life like at 195 pounds? Oh, wow. Um, it, you know, I thought things were okay, but at the point before I started the transformation challenge, I, um, you know, I wasn't able to do all the things I wanted to do. You know, I was tired. I was, you know, feeling like I'm busting out of my clothes, you know, um, and I, I, it was just, it wasn't where I wanted to be. Um, I had, you know, not been able to do, I, you know, the sports and the fun and the, you know, going out and venture stuff with my husband and hiking, things that he likes to do for a, not being able to do it easily for a very, very long time. And then the one that would be holding us back when we go places or we went somewhere with the family, I uh, wouldn't be able to do everything that they were doing because I, you know, would get out of breath and my body was just would hurt, um, <laughs> you know, so I, I was hurting a lot all the time um, before I started really uh, thinking back about, you know, you know, you think you're okay until you get out of it and start moving forward. And then you look back and you're like, yes. wow, I was living with what I thought was normal and what yeah. a lot of people around me were living with for yeah. so long. Um, and a lot of it was gradual. So I didn't realize until you, you know, I was able to stop and make the changes and then go, okay, there's, there's, I can do something else and I can be the person I want to be um, physically with a little bit of work. <laughs> yeah. And so. you, I love what you said, because it's so true. We almost adjust to the way life has become because if, if, and if any of us all of a sudden woke, went to bed at 150, snapped our fingers, woke up at 200 pounds, we would notice the, how the weight affected us. But that's not yeah. how it works, right? We gained it a little bit here, a little bit there. So we get used to it. And so I don't think most of us ever realize how it affects us. And so along the road of losing the 42.8 pounds, you had a friend <laughs> named Jennifer. <laughs> and like, how did, so I, I just, I don't how did that go down? So did she watch you? Did you like tell her about it? Like, how did it 
how did that even, how did it happen? Um, all of the above. Um, I did, I had let her know what I was doing. Um, that I let her know when I applied, um, you know, we had a mutual friend that encouraged me to actually apply after watching you for a while, um, and what was going on. And so, um, and I had told her about it. And then once I got started, you know, I had told her about it. <laughs> and, um, and so she, Jennifer was very supportive and encouraging, you know, through my process of getting started. Um, and I'll let her <laughs> tell you some of her, <laughs> her thoughts in the process also. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I shared a lot, you know, as soon as, as I knew what was going on and Jennifer's, you know, like really my closest friend. So, um, you know, I always let her know what's going on and, uh, because, you know, we need that support. Um, and thankfully yeah. she was supportive through that process. Um, and I was fortunate to have, you know, a lot of support when getting started in this process. So, so Jennifer, uh, first off your friend gets started in a weight loss thing, right? And your from your perspective, like, how did you get roped into this? <laughs> There's a whole mix of emotions. I was seeing it posted, I think, um, from a mutual friend that had been through season two. And uh, well, Dr. Mary Starr, I, has, I saw her posting about it. And then um, and then I, I think probably a couple of us were encouraging uh, Wendy because I knew she was tied in with you guys. I'm like, well, why did you try this? And then when she told me that she was selected, I, there was a whole weird emotional thing because we've been friends so long I feel like super protective of her. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. Um, but then also like, you know, cause she was like, I got accepted. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. What do you have to do? And she was like, well, there's the coaching and there's these things. And I was like, what? You got accepted for something that you have to pay for coaching for? So that was very, actually a very negative response from me at first because we had, <laughs> We have been through all kinds of diets before, right? Together. And we were kind of like the world's worst accountability partners because we sympathized with each other. We're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay to do that. And then we would just like never lose weight. <laughs> so I knew that I needed something else. Um, she knew she needed something else. And so I just kind of sat back and watched to see how this would go down. And when I saw Wendy changing, like it was from the inside out, everything. And she was sticking with it. And Wendy's already incredible about, give me a list, I can accomplish this. Yeah. And so I watched her and I saw her complete it. I'm like, this is awesome. I actually signed up, um, like I was tackling Carmen a couple months before her applications even came out for the next season. <laughs> Remember that? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm like, tell me what to do. <laughs> I do. I remember that. And the season, so you saw your friend losing weight and changing. And I think that's the biggest thing is when it's one thing to lose weight, right? But when you see them changing from the inside out, and obviously you guys are incredibly close, then it's like, well, you, re I think it's, you recognize something was different this time. Like yes. There was something different. It wasn't just a fad diet or a crash diet, or it wasn't just this fad. And Wendy is incredibly uh, determined. She's incredibly persistent and she is incredible at following directions. Right. And so I can see why. So I think it's, I think it's, I say all that to say, I think it's normal to be a little protective about what are you doing? And then also, I don't know if you had any of these feelings of like feeling left behind a little bit because she's changing. She no, you know, no, well, no, I don't think I did. It, it took me a while to go, okay, actually what she's doing is good. And so I was still just kind of waiting to see, but then I was like, okay, tell me what to do. I want to do this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so I remember the season, the applications opened, you sent your video in, and then there was like this weird thing because you were going to be leaving on a mission trip. Yes. Oh, and yeah. not, just, not just to like Chicago. <laughs> Where were you going? I was going to Uganda. And so I was like, I sent Carmen a message like, I don't know if I can do this. I would have to start in a developing country. <laughs> so and but Carmen, you were so supportive. She responded back and she was like, I think you can do this. You'll have Wendy there. She knows what to do already. She's been doing this and um, you can do this. 
absolutely you can. I was like, okay. So I did it scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And so yeah. you guys went on that trip together and you started your weight loss journey in Uganda. And uh, in six months, what, Jennifer, you lost, you went from 205.2 down to 160.8. You lost 44.4 pounds in six months. Combined as friends, you used 87.2 pounds in six months. Like that is... So how was it doing, starting your weight loss journey, Jennifer, in Uganda? Oh, it was awesome because Wendy was there. <laughs> <laughs> she already knew what to do. And she's like, just get your containers out. Here's how you do it. I'm like, okay. So I just did everything that Wendy did. <laughs> yeah. It was so much easier. Yeah. And she had a system and, you know, like I said, Wendy's incredibly diligent when it comes to that things. And we're going to talk about what they were actually doing in Uganda. I don't want to go there yet. Um, but the, the work that these women are doing to help those that are less fortunate is absolutely incredible. And I do not want to end this interview without us talking about that and telling other people how they can be a part of it because the world needs to be aware of what you guys are doing and the lives that you are changing um, is absolutely freaking incredible. And so with that being said, I want to go back to, so for both of you guys, what was the biggest change? Because, you know, losing 40, both of you lost 40 some pounds. And the biggest thing that the audience wants to know is, okay, so how did you do it? Like, what was the biggest thing that changed from going from somebody who was overweight and struggling to, dropping this weight and inspiring because both of you have inspired so many people to also get started to also apply for other seasons of the biggest transformation transformation so what did you do what changed if you want to go first wendy um i know for me one of the things coming into this that was different than what and jennifer alluded to this a bit you know we've both been doing did done different weight loss plans some together some separate um over the years, like, you know, and I was always able to do it for like three or four months. And then I would usually kind of sustain and hold on to um, uh, maintain what I had done for a while. But then I would just gradually fall, fall back out, fall off of the plan and that kind of thing and just go back. Right. And then gain everything back. Um, so for me, part of this coming into this, I knew that I got to have the accountability. The accountability was a big thing that was missing for me. And I had been doing um, different trainings leading up to this and getting into understanding that having accountability is not a bad thing. It's, it's okay. It doesn't mean that you are not strong. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. It means that you're wise and you recognize uh, that it takes somebody coming alongside and helping you to keep moving forward and to teach you the skills that you're lacking to also be successful. So for me, it was a combination of having the accountability, um, having the coaching from you, having the whole accountability system that you set up for us with uh, my whole season support, with what you were teaching us. And then as I went through it, you know, the food plan, you know, one of those things too that I had been looking for at that point was something that was balanced, something that was sustainable. It wasn't something going to be that I could do for three months and then I'm like, forget it because it's too hard or it's too limiting. Uh, so I knew having watched others go through it and kind of examining it because I'm a researcher person um, to see that, okay, I feel like this is something I can, I will be able to do that it's healthy for me long term. And it's something that once I go through it, I can sustain and not feel like it's not going to be a healthy thing to do. Um, so the whole thing of working together with the food plan and the, the working out, which was something I was also lacking, I would like, I would walk and do a little bit of things and then that would go away. Um, so all of those things work together. So the accountability and the coaching. So the coaching with the mindset training uh, I'd already started the journey of doing some of those things through, um, you know, other teachings and other trainings that we had been plugging into uh, and how I came to know who you are, Carmen, in the first place. Um, but that is what made the most lasting change is getting to be able to change the mindset, to change the way I was thinking, to change the way I looked at 
food and working out and being, you know, healthy and being fit. Um, and then also just walking that process. And the more progress I made, and I was committed to sharing my progress, because <laughs> one of the biggest things that scared me about doing this program was knowing that uh, I was going to be sharing and you were going to be posting this stuff publicly and people would be seeing what I look like because nobody knew what I look like under my clothes. Um, I hardly wanted to look at what I look like under my clothes. Um, so that was a huge thing for me, becoming comfortable with that sharing, becoming comfortable with going, this is where I am, but I'm not staying here. I'm going to be moving forward. And um, all of those things came together to allow this to be something that was life changing and lasting because I've been on this journey for a year and a half now. So it's it wasn't a three month thing. It wasn't a six month thing for me. This is a lifelong change. This is something I will continue to do. And one thing is the longer I do this, the more I look back at pictures of where I was it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. So those are some of the things, the accountability, the mindset training, coupled with the amazing plan and skills that we learn is, you know, what has made the most difference, the biggest difference in my life. So, um, Wendy, that, that you pretty much covered all of it. Um, so, um, maybe with some slight perspective changes for me, um, when I first started, I had been through, I mean, we've been through weight loss journeys for so long. Um, and it was just the diet train, right? And I definitely wanted something that wasn't the diet train. I wanted to know how to live like a normal person should live and feel good. And so when I first started, um, even like we were talking about me communicating with Carmen about um, my application and sending in a video and stuff like that. Um, it was hard for me because I was having to like come out of hiding, even though I wasn't yeah. hiding, like everybody knew that I was overweight and that I was struggling and I was up and I was down. You know, I was looking at pictures of the years and mine was up and down and up and down, but never as far, um, you know, as, as much weight as I've lost it to this point. So, and just feeling good. So coming out of hiding was very emotional for me. I mean, with the accountability group, it was super helpful and coaching like I could not have done this without coaching. And that was the thing that I was worried about with Wendy. And then I'm like, oh, it's the missing piece. It's the missing piece. I needed the coaching because, you know, we can't be so um, have such expectations of ourselves to think that we should have to do it all ourselves, you know. We need help when we're at that point. If, when you've tried over and over and over again and you're not making progress or for long term, then that's where we need somebody else to come in. And so coming out of hiding and knowing that somebody else believed in me where I did not believe in me was huge. And that's what Carmen offered there. The mindset training was enormous because that's, I mean, that when you feel like you're coming out of hiding, that's because of your mindset. You're having to change your mindset. You're having to, to deal with everything that's going on emotionally with your habits, not just, I mean, your habits connected with your food, but just like everything, like your whole mind changes. And that was another big missing piece that could only have been provided by um, somebody who knew about how to do that. And so correcting the mindset, um, that was probably an even bigger change than my physical appearance and how I felt um, physically is just changing how I thought about everything, especially because we have, we can be our own worst critics, our own worst enemies, like the things that we say to ourselves, we would never say to other people ever because it's horrible. And so catching that and realizing what it is that we have been doing to ourselves all this time is where, you know, we, we learn to come out of that. And so um, developing a vision was pretty big because, you know, you hear about make your goals, like say, create a vision, make your goals. A lot of this, a lot of the, the checklist things like eat healthy, exercise, drink water, develop a vision. We all know, know those things on the surface. Most of us do, but we don't really understand how to implement that and stay consistent to that goal to where we actually reach the vision. Yes, we might have this huge vision, but actually getting there, how do you do it, right? And how do you develop the vision so much that your mind believes it 
to the point that it makes it happen. So those are, um, those are giant. Um, so the accountability and yeah, um, the habits. So habits, um, we, we can, we often do things like Wendy was saying for long, you know, two, three months. And then what, what is it that throws up us off of our habits that we've developed? It's probably other priorities because especially, you know, with us, like we're homes, both of us are homeschool moms too. Um, and taking care of the family and taking care of this and taking care of that, we always um, end up going, okay, things are crazy right now. My health is going on the bottom. Why? <laughs> We're not supposed to do that. So, um, so learning how to keep myself a priority and all of us go through that. We're, we're all having to learn how to keep ourselves priority so that we don't, um, you know, end up at the bottom because that's the way we live our lives. And then we get, you know, into our sixties or something, start having all these health problems. And then we're not there for our grandkids, you know, where we could be, all we have to do is keep ourselves, um, our health as a priority. And it sounds simple, but, um, it's not easy. We need somebody to help us to stay on track and, and kind of spot be our, our error spotter <laughs> so that we can correct. And I love, I love that you said there. Oh, we're Sorry. getting feedback, which is awesome. Um, is that okay? So I, I love what you said there about how we do for everybody else, and then we put ourselves on. So often, and so many mothers do this. Almost, almost all the moms that I've ever coached do the exact same thing, where we do for everybody else that we end up not doing for ourselves. We don't make ourselves a priority. And so I love, and I love the different insights from each one of you. And I even loved what you said, Jennifer, about, you know, the one thing you were leery of was the coaching. And it turns out that was the missing key. And I love that because, you know, both of you know, like we'll just let ourselves off the hook sometimes. And we'll let ourselves with the reason of, oh, I'm, I, I have to take care of the kids. I've got to take care of this thing. I've got to take care of that thing. I'll, I'll worry about my health later. And the truth is five, 10 years go by and we still haven't made it a priority. And so Wendy, how would you, what would you say has been like, how, if you could just narrow it down to one thing, how has losing all the weight, how has it impacted your life the most? Like, where have you seen the biggest difference? Oh, wow. Because it really affects, like, everything. Um, <laughs> you know, going through this because you, you learn so much. Um, I mean, obviously physically, but I think part of, you know, probably the biggest thing has been you know, the confidence, um, to, yeah. to move forward and not have to worry about what other people think <laughs> really, because going through this, you know, cause I have that to some degree in some areas, but when it comes to, you know, a lot of what we walk, walked through and what we worked through with you really helped us to also realize that, you know, it doesn't matter what people think about us. Some people are going to be supportive. Some people are not. Yeah. And that doesn't just go with our weight loss journey. That goes for everything that we do in our lives. So, you know, being aware of, you know, who, who, are, you know, we talked about at the beginning, who do you flock, who are you flocking with? Um, <laughs> you know, and making sure to pick and choose, um, making sure to listen to those that are who, where you want to go and those that are supporting the journey that you're on and just, you know, it's okay to not spend as much time with some of the other people or to just let what they say pass because yeah. they're not you and they don't know the journey you're on. They don't understand where you were and where you're going. Um, so I think probably that, because that, that piece, you know, has, has moved into and affected every, every area that I work in, in my life and even within my own family um, and with my own, with my marriage and all these other things that, you know, you, I know for me personally, you know, walking through and dealing with all this extra weight, there were so many things that I thought and perceived. And even though, and this is a little personal, but with, you know, with my marriage relationship, that my husband was amazing and supportive and loved me and wanted to, you know, be with me no matter where I was, which I know a lot of people don't have. But in my own mind, 
I didn't totally understand that. Like I couldn't mm-hmm. accept that. Um, and so for me, even kind of leading up prior to this, I had already been working on that issue of my mind and allowing, allow being receiving that, right? We need to receive, we need to receive the good that people want to give us um, and, and not allow what we think of ourselves and where we're at keep us from receiving those things. So part of what we walked through really helped me also walk through the process of releasing some of that old thinking, releasing that um, way that I looked at myself to realize no matter what, what I look like, you know, I I should, I get to receive what people want to, to bless me with. I get to receive the love from my husband. I get to, sorry. I get to receive um, the good that that is available to me, and um, and that kind you know that that came really obviously in that area as well, you know and gave me the confidence to to be able to um, move forward and do new things and try new things and be more comfortable in my own skin, um, which was very lacking and. Um, and I know, you know, I mean, you know, your marriage relationship, when you, we allow these things to get in there, it manifests a lot of negative things in our, in the family and around you and all of those things. And so we've seen some amazing changes over the last, you know, year and a half, two years as, as I've made those changes in my thinking and my actions to move forward. So um, so that's one example. Well, yeah, and when you don't love yourself or you are self-conscious about your weight, it you project that on other people, right? And so it's if yeah. you don't believe it, if you don't believe you're beautiful, you certainly can't understand how your husband would think that. So I completely, yeah. <laughs> I completely <laughs> understand. I'll be more beautiful with the lights off. <laughs> We don't need the lights on. A dim candle. Yeah, I could. Yes, a hundred percent. So, uh, Jennifer, if you could narrow it down to one place, what, how has losing the weight impacted you the most? Narrow it down to one. Wow. (laughs) Um, I mean, I can go simple and say I can sit in the airplane seat all the way to Uganda and back comfortably without my feet and legs swelling up like balloons. Yes. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, I think probably self-confidence, the confidence to know that I am able to do it, yeah. that my body was created to heal itself. And when given what it needs, it can do amazing things. Yeah. yeah. And there's, you know, because I think sometimes we get to a point where we don't know if our body can bounce back. Like, have I been overweight too long? Can my body recover? And it is amazing how fast, just what you said, how fast when you start doing the right things and the right combinations, how quickly your energy, your skin, like traveling in a plane to Uganda, how different those two trips are, you know, just a couple months apart. And so with that being said, what do you guys keep going to Uganda for? (laughs) Well, Wendy was the last one to go. So why don't you go ahead and share, Wendy? <laughs> okay. Well, you started this whole thing, but I'll, I'll share. Um, <laughs> I'll fill in the so, gaps. Yes. Yes. So we go we go to Uganda because we have um, a children's home there that we work with that we got connected to. Jennifer got connected to through a mutual friend. Um, and we have been uh, working with them since 2015 and traveling there since 2017. So we have made, um, I think both of us now eight trips there. Um, And so when we go, we we work with the the kids and the staff at the children's home. We also work with other community organizations when we're over there. We've made many, many, many friends and connections um, in the years that we've been going back and forth. And there is just, we have 74 children that we work with, children and young adults now. Um, And so it has been a life-changing process to just be a part of that, to be able to travel and to go and to experience, um, you know, another way of life. 
and also to see that the impact that we're making, because you know, it was a couple years of of sending money and helping and praying for them before we were able to actually travel there to be with them in person. And so once we started being able to travel, you know, the connection will never go away. Um, being able to touch and hug and to to realize that the impact of us, all the things, all the little things that we do here to share and to help people learn about the, the kids and what we're doing um, and the, the hours spent fundraising, uh, you know, make such a huge difference. And then, you know, often people ask us about traveling, like, why do we spend the money to travel there? And, and our, our goal is to be there every six months um, as an administrative, you know, team, because, you know, because we get to check on everything and to make sure that they're well supported. Um, and also to get, you know, on the ground updates and pictures and all those fun things we get to share. Um, but one of the things that, uh, I mean, and he told us this the first trip and even the second trip is us being there in person makes, helps them, you know, it made a huge impact on them in the, in that, you know, <laughs> he's like, you don't understand how much it means to us that you left your life to come home. So you left your family to come and visit us. And to take the time out to be with us, we understand what investment that cost you, what sacrifice that cost you to even be able to get on a plane to come here, um, much less to be able to, you know, learn how to live in different conditions and learn how to eat different food and all those things that go along with being in a developing country. Um, and then being there and <laughs> leaving the first couple of trips was actually horrible um, because they did not want us to leave and they were so sad um, because they didn't know if we'd come back. They didn't know if we would come back. Now they know we'll come back and, and it's more of a joyous thing. But um, what they tell us, and they still tell us this, the kids and the, and the staff still tell us, go home and tell those people about us. Tell them that we love them, that we are praying for them and we are so thankful for their support and for all that they are doing for us. Um, and what we do as far as, you know, basics is we cover, you know, we provide food and clothing and um, wonderful housing for them from where we started to where we are now. We, um, there are a number of projects <laughs> that are going on um, and we've been able to see, we have children, we have young adults now that are in university that are going to trade school that have been with Daniel for years and years and have developed into amazing, amazing young adults and children. These children amaze us every time that we go. Um, I had the honor of being able to teach them a little bit about managing finances this last trip. And we had the opportunity, thanks to amazing supporters, to be able to take them out in groups and actually go shopping for themselves. Um, this is something that majority of them had not had an opportunity to do yet. And even for the few older kids who had done it a little bit, not, not to this extent, like they didn't have this amount of money to manage and all of those things. Um, but part of what the process of that was, uh, you know, I, we did some studying for, you know, the week before. Um, and then when we went out, they had their money, they had already gone through the process of setting aside money to save and to give. So they had their spending money that they got to use for their clothing because uh, it was specifically for clothing shopping. And then after we went, we came back, you know, and we, we videoed and photographed all that they got. And then we gave them time to share their experience and being able to listen to how they have taken all the things that Daniel, the, who is the orphanage director, has been teaching them and the staff as well as the things that I was able to impart to them um, the week before. And then they were sharing the tools that they had learned, the experiences they had learned to help give the, ne the next group advice. Um, and it was just so amazing. They, they learned a lot <laughs> just through those experiences. And so it was amazing to be able to provide that experience for these children. Um, and these young adults. And these are things that now 
because it wasn't just me teaching about it, they were able to actually put what we talked about into practice. And that's a lot of what we we do besides, you know, providing for their basic needs is we all, we want, we work to provide experiences that they can have life skills that will take them into the future because we're not about having them, helping them get through like secondary school, like, like our high school, and then just letting, putting them on the streets. That is not our goals at all. Um, we have a trans, a plan to help them transition into, so they're in university now, there's a plan in place to help them transition into being on their own. And um, this is one area that we are in the middle of working on because we have land and we are in the process of getting a building built to be able to have um, the older kids have a place to be learning independence um, and future goals that this will be a place where they can work and sustain um, their livelihood and help sustain the orphanage overall in the long run. But anyways, lots and lots of things going on there. Well, and I love how these it, it's providing, what you guys do is providing an opportunity in a life that they would never have. You know, many of these kids are there. They don't have families. They wouldn't have food. It's because of what you guys are leading up and people that are giving to this. I mean, they're becoming productive citizens. Kids yes. that would have been on the street that were left, some of them left for dead, right? Some of them left without anybody that cared. Who knows? Well, many, no doubt in my mind, many of these kids would not be alive without what it is that you guys do. And so, Jennifer, how can somebody be a part of this because I mean, what are, what are, do you guys have a campaign you're doing right now and how can people be a part of this? So, um, yeah, um, we've come a long way. So for people, for people to join us and our, our biggest, our biggest, um, drive right now is to raise funds for this building to get the adult children. We have how many of them? 20 of them that are 18 and up, 18 and up. So now granted they started school like when they were nine years old. So a lot of them are still in like high school level. And so they're working through, but legally, even in Uganda, those kids need to move off, like off of the grounds of the orphanage, the children's home. These are all true orphans. They have no living family or no way to contact family at all. And so we are, developing these kids to be leaders, not just, um, you know, great citizens, they're going to be leaders of their community. And so building this building is a huge deal. So you can go to uoccusa.org and find our website there, go to the, um, the donate, and then you'll find, I believe that's right, right, Wendy, they can find the transition home. It's called the transition home project right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wendy's our financial director. So <laughs> oh, I explained to her. Um, and that's how you can find out. Also follow us, go find us on Facebook. We're um, Ugandan Orphan Child Care Ministries. You should be able to find our group and our page. Our group is the active private area. We have to protect the kids. So we have to keep it a private group, but go request to join and just let us know that you watched um, Carmen's video here. And we would love to have you um, be part of us and see the enormous changes that we're making, not only with these orphans, but we're working with widows um, and uh, that are also part of our group. So it's been an inspiration, um, a life-changing experience all these years to watch these kids go from starving, sleeping on the ground in the water with mosquitoes and bed bugs and all this horrible stuff to grow grown up thriving young men and women that have one, our hearts, they're our family. We love them so much. That is incredible. Uh, I, I will put the links, the website in the description box down below, and then also the Facebook, how to find them on Facebook. And then when they go to the website, is there a place that they can give right there? Um, yes. Yeah, so there should be like, you can look at it on your phone or on the computer on the PC. And there is um, on the PC, there's just like a donate button right at the top. Okay. And then on your phone, there's like a pull down menu and you go to that one. Is that, is that correct, Wendy? Yeah, I believe that's how it's showing up right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then if any of you, listen, 
it's one thing. To, so I think it's part of all of our mandates to help the less fortunate, right? And it's wild because when you start giving to causes and what I love about even you guys and going through this transformation and losing the weight is you've taken these kids with you. I remember seeing videos where the kids were working out with you and then they were working out when you left. And so it's like their PE class and like the, these new habits, even that you're learning in health, you're, you know, you're teaching them also how to be healthy. And so it's not, it's just what you guys are doing for these kids is absolutely incredible. And so, and, and being able to spend time with these women and being able to hear about it and seeing them take the trips and seeing them bring stuff back and sell the stuff. I mean, beautiful bags and jewelry, and you could not find a better cause to be a part of. And so I want to encourage all of you, if you're watching this video, to go over to the website, go down below in the description box, whether you have, listen, there's no amount too small. So if you have $5 to give, if you have $10 to give, if you have a hundred or 500 or a thousand, it's tax deductible. And you know that your donation is going to help these kids who truly have no family and um, rely on us, rely on people like you to do that. And so Jennifer and Wendy, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for taking time out of all the things that you both do, being mothers, being wives, uh, being weight loss success stories, being, you know, a, 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 a voice for the orphan. Um, you are true, true inspirations and true and in, two incredible women. And so very blessed to be a small part of your journey and that we get to do life together and I get to watch you like just be awesome human beings. And so, by the way, Jennifer's mother is currently in season seven of The Biggest Transformation. Her name is Jewel, and she was 100% inspired by her daughter, by Wendy, of what is possible. And so uh, if you're out there watching and you have this thing inside of you and you know that there's more to life than what you're living and you've tried to lose weight in the past and you failed, let these two women be an inspiration that if they can do it, so can you. And so thank everybody. Thank you for watching. We will be back next week. Same time, same place.